Okay, what are you saying people and welcome back to my channel. Now today I've got another weekly forex analysis for you guys. So on the screen are the pairs we'll be analyzing today. But make sure you stay to the end of the video because I will be going into depth analysis about what's happened during this week's trading week and potentially what can be happening during next week's trading week. So make sure you stay to the end of the video for all of that. But with all that said guys, let's get straight into it. First up, we've got Euro USD. Okay, so up first, people, we've got Euro USD. So for this pair, as you can see, we did roll over to the downside this week, which was expected. We did see the market close quite bearish last week, and uh, the momentum is pretty much to the downside still. However, Thursday and Friday, we did see some bullish momentum come into the markets this week. So it's looking like the market might not necessarily turn bullish, but we might see a move to the upside. I think for the market to turn bullish, we do need to see the market break through this point here, and then we might be seeing the market trend to the upside again. But for now, it's looking like we might be seeing a move back into that resistance here. We do have this area of support here in the market, which we tried to break through a couple times now. You can see with that bullish candle there, nice work to the downside, failed to break through, pull back up again. And then we saw two bearish candles giving us a move to the downside, which we did expect last week. However, we didn't really sustain those lows, and we pushed back up Thursday and Friday back above that same level see uh, a little bit clearer on the weekly time frame so you can see we've had one two three four weeks uh, holding on that support and this week we were, we were looking quite bearish but we did pull back up again and close bullish back above that support so we are holding that support and the market currently is going to break through it so i think we'll probably see some continuations of that bullish momentum we saw uh, to the end of last week coming into this week and push us back up to 1.19500, which is just this area where we've got all those daily wicks. So for next week, I will be looking for buying opportunities for EURUSD. Um, on the 4H, we are at an area of resistance, so it's probably not the smartest idea to buy into this area right now where EURUSD is, even though we think we'll probably break through that. I uh, want to see either a break and retest, so the market breaks to the upside, we see some nice bullish momentum on Monday, breaks through that area, we come back, start holding a support, and then we can look for our buying opportunities back into the resistance up there, uh, which is the same resistance that we just looked at on the daily, or we fall to the downside and the market rejects that area, and we start forming support, potentially another higher low, and then we can form a um, um, some nice buying opportunities and look to target that resistance and then if you break through that that resistance up there but either way we'll be looking for buying opportunities for euro usd we have seen some nice bearish momentum but it looks like the market wants to have another push up maybe a bit more retracement or potentially uh turn bullish again so yeah euro usd looking for those buying opportunities for next week even want to see some retracement from where we are right now or the market get above that area and start holding as support and then we can be looking for our buying opportunities but for euro usd i think another move back in to 1.19500 uh, for next week does look likely. Next we're going to take a look at USD JPY. Okay so next up we've got USD JPY so for this pair as you can see we had actually a big move to the downside this week. Uh, last week I was actually expecting to see a move to the upside since we did get a nice close above this area and also was acting as support and we did have some trendline support there as well. We were creating higher highs higher lows but as you can see the market has broken through that structure and broken back below that key level of resistance so potentially just a false breakout there and we might be actually be seeing more downside for USD JPY rather than upside. So for next week we'll be looking for short opportunities however as you can see after that big move we do need to see some retracement coming into the markets which we are starting to see however um, we are looking to see if we can get a nice retest of this area here around the 110 500 area as you can see we're quite not there yet so i want to see a bit more upside for next week for use jpy before we look for those shorts and then for targets we'll simply be back at these prior lows here uh, if we do make that um, that move back down again but usage apy shorts for next week we'll see if we can get a bit more retracement to the upside of course we don't have to actually reach that level we could fall to the downside before that but it'd be great if it's see if we can reach that level and then we can look for shorts back down to that support and if you do break through this area we can go a lot lot further but right now usage apy looks like we just had a bit of a false breakout of that resistance as you can see nice push to the downside breaking through structure so naturally want to see a bit of retracement then the lower time frames for our hourly 15 minute whatever time from you can look to trade from we can look to capture that move to the downside back into that price support around the 109 600 level and then if you do get a nice break of that we can go a lot further and next we've got usd cad okay so next up we've got usd cad so for this pair as you can see we did have quite a nice move to the upside this week the market did start off at this support we held that area which was expected and then we did see quite a nice move to the upside there 
later on the week giving us some new highs around 1.26 so the market is looking quite bullish however friday we did close quite bearish so it does look like we might be back in retracement mode again for usd cad and we did see the market close back beneath this area of resistance here so i'm expecting for usd cad to start the week off quite bearish seeing move to the downside uh potentially a move back into this trend line so we connect those recent lows there so connecting this low here and that low there i think we can have a move back into that area there and if you do break through that trend line back into this support so if the market does um break through that support break through that trend line then i think we will be looking quite bearish at that point and at that point we'll be looking for selling opportunities maybe back at that resistance so the support flip to resistance and look to take this much lower maybe back down to 1.22 or even further but for now use the cad i feel we're going to see a bit of retracement to the downside then if we can hold these Areas, either hold that trend line or if we break through the trend line hold this support we'll be looking for those buying opportunities to take this back higher again and see if we can get a push back into this highs all the way up there probably won't hold them for a trade for that long but we'll be looking for buying opportunities for usd cad if we do come back to these areas for now the market is looking quite bearish with this spike to the upside spike back down again so on the lower time frames could potentially take part some short term sales aiming at that trend line or aim for that support whichever one uh, you think the market will come to but yeah if you usd cad is short term sells to the downside and if you do find support in these areas here either at that trend line or that support could be some really nice buys back to the highs and maybe even see the market push forward again up next is euro gbp sorry to interrupt the video guys but if you are enjoying the content and you find it useful make sure you go hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure you drop a like as well it really does help the channel out but anyway back to the video Okay, so next up we've got Euro GBP. So for this pair, as you can see, we're overall still very much in the bearish market here. A little bit choppy, as you can see with the price action that wicks to either side. The market has been consolidating for a little bit as well, but the market is still bearish, still obeying that trend line and still giving us those lower lows and those lower highs. Recently, we've been struggling to break through that support and it did look at one point that the market was going to turn bullish again, holding out that support, maybe a potential double bottom. However, as you can see with this bullish candle here, we did pull back quite a lot below that trend line. And then Friday's kind of did take us back below. Um, back below that trend line and back into that support there so the market for me is still bearish and if we can get a break of that support there i do see the daily coming back into these lows all the way here before we had that um, big uh, move to the upside there so the market is still bearish and looking for those selling opportunities for next week because i do think that's where the bigger move is yes this is a very key level of support and we can see a move to the upside there but look at all this bearish momentum don't really want to be going against it too much uh, for next week so waiting for a bit of retracement back into that trend line there and if we can hold as resistance then we'll be looking for the selling opportunities back into that support and if we can get a break of that support back into that daily support all the way back down there or if you don't want to wait for the opportunity or if it doesn't if it doesn't come because we could just you know break through that support on monday if that does happen if we can hold below this as resistance as the market's failing to break back above then we can be looking for those selling opportunities on that break and retest and take that back down to around 0.849 uh, 0 0.84900 so your gp looking for the selling opportunities very strong area support don't really want to be selling into that so either wait for the break break and retest or wait for a bit of a pullback to come maybe back into that trend line and then wait to sell it back down again so for euro gp expecting more downside and if we can stay below that trend line we could probably end up coming back down to those lows if we get back above that trend line so we get a nice daily close above it and the market starts to create some higher highs then yes your gp is likely to turn bullish again but for now the market is still quite bearish and if we can break through that support i do see it I do see us coming back into that daily support back down there. Okay, so up next we've got AUD USD. Okay, so next up we've got AUD USD. So for this pair, as you can see, we did have a move to the downside this week, which was expected. We did see the AUD USD have a lot of bearish momentum from the previous weeks, and we did expect to see that momentum come into this week as well. So we did have a move to the downside. However, we did find support on Friday, as you can see, with that bullish engulfing candle there, and we did come and test that 0 0.74 um, area of resistance. Uh, which is now acting as support. So I do take that across. You can see we just about tapped into that area. We haven't hit 0 0.74 on the dot. We've come to that um, support that I was talking about previously when we did have this move to the downside. So we've tapped into that area. And I think we can see a bit of a move to the upside now for ADUSD. We do have a bit of this channel going on 
uh, for this pair to the downside here connecting those lower highs and these lower lows as you can see first second third test and first second third test as well we dipped slightly below but we only did that to come and test that support and now we popped the heads back above so i think for adusd we might be seeing this bullish momentum continue to the upside um, for the start of the week then depending on what we do at this upper trend line depending if we break through it or not we can see a nice selling opportunity if we do hold and if we do break potentially look for some longs because at that point we might be seeing a bigger move to the upside back into this resistance up here or maybe even further so for ADUSD, I think a bit of bullish momentum coming into the week early on, and then we'll be waiting for an opportunity around this area here to see what the trend line wants to do, see if we break or hold. If we do see some nice wicks or the market rejecting that area, we'll, we'll be looking for selling opportunities back down into that trend line, back down into that support. And then from there, we'll probably look for buys again if we do see some nice rejection or probably just sit, sit on the sidelines and see what the market wants to do. So for ADUSD, we'll be looking for selling opportunities around this area here, but if we do break past that, then we'll be waiting for a pullback because I do think there's a good chance we'll probably creep back up to around the 0 0.76500 area or maybe even further. Now let's take a look at NZD CAD. Okay, so as you can see for NZD CAD this week, we had a bit of a move to the upside, a nice push to the upside. We were expecting to see a move higher because we were rejecting this support quite well, as you can see with those wicks. So I was expecting to see a move into this resistance. However, wasn't expecting it to break. And as you can see, we did have quite an aggressive break of that area. So the market did give us a higher high there on the 4H. On the daily, as you can see, we are still rejecting this key area of support in the market. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six tests uh, of this daily um, of this daily level of support and the market is still holding this area so i'm expecting to see another drive higher for nsd cad for next week as you can see we've seen big moves to the upside from this area and recently we start to pick up that pace again so we'll be looking for long opportunities for nsd cad we do have this trend line here so if you do see a bit more retracement to the downside test this trend line hop test that trend line hold on to it then we can be looking for some nice longs back into these highs here maybe even further or if we do break through that trend line still we'll be looking for long to back at this support again because again you can see how many times we've hold into the support if the market does come back into that support again to test it um the likely chance is that the market will hold on to it and see another move higher so uh, if the market does break for that trend line still we're we'll looking for long opportunities as long as the market stays above this support breaks below probably change my bias back to bearish again but we'll be looking for longs uh, for next week so first we'll look at that trend line and if you do break for that trend line we'll be back looking at the support again 0 0.86 500 area and if you do hold on to that we'll be looking for longs and we'll be targeting that previous high back at this area all the way up there Next up, we've got GBP NZD. Okay, so next up, we've got Pound NZD. So for this pair, as you can see, we did see a nice spike to the downside, which was expected. We did see um, some nice bearish uh, momentum the previous week. So we were expecting some new lows this week back at around 1.95. We did see a push past this point here. Didn't quite get into that 1.95 area, but we did see those new lows. And as you can see, it was short lived. A nice spike down, spike back up again, retest. Giving us, giving us that false break and retest. Then we saw the real momentum coming to the markets to the upside. So the market overall is still very bullish here on the daily time frames. And a nice wick to the downside there early on in the week. And I think this is just another higher low for another drive back into these highs and maybe even some higher highs as well. You can see we're also back above our key level 1.98. Uh, which is a key level of resistance. We'll now be acting as support. So if we just take this across. You can see nice resistance there, there again, there again, there again. Did break to the upside there, but failed to hold as support. Did test the resistance there again, but now back above. So hopefully we can hold this as a, as support now and look for those buying opportunities back into those highs up there. So my bias for pound NZD is very much to the upside, expecting another push back to those highs and probably even some higher highs as well. So for next week, waiting for a bit of retracement, hopefully you can get maybe 50% of that move back down again. See if we can hold that as support and then we'll be looking for the, looking for those longs back into those highs and then potentially even further. Next, we're gonna move on to CAD JPY. Okay, so next up we've got CAD JPY. So for this pair, as you can see, the market did have a nice dump to the downside, which was expected. We hanged on to this area of resistance here on the daily, gave us a nice double top there. So test it once, twice, then fell to the downside. So the market here is looking quite bearish. However, we did see quite a big pullback there on Friday, and now we're back above this key area of resistance. Um, 
which was acting as support. So resistance there, support there, and support here as well. Now we close back above that same area. So the market potentially just had another false break of this area. We did have a slight one with that wick over there, and now we're back above this area. So I'm expecting to see a move to the upside now uh, for CAD-JPY back into this resistance here, or at least to come and test this bearish trend line here, connecting those uh, recent highs there. So for next week, looking for those buying opportunities for CAD-JPY, as you can see, had a quite a big move to the downside. So I wanna see if the market can really hold above this area first so maybe a little bit more upside see if you can come back down hold on to this area and then we'll be looking for those buys uh buying opportunities on the 4h or the hourly or the uh, lower time frames back into that trend line and the break of the trend line will take us into this area here on the 90 zone so cad jpy bullish on this pair i think we can see another move to the upside after this quite big drop to the downside i think either we'll see retracement back up again and then we fall back over or we'll see potentially the market turn bullish again and see some new highs so um We'll wait to see what happens, but for now, looking for those buying opportunities for CAD JPY. I want to see a bit more retracement for this pair, um, and then if we can hold this area around the 88 mark, we'll look for buys back into this trend line here, and then back into that resistance if we can break through that trend line. Up next is GBP USD. Okay, so next up we've got pound USD. So for this pair, we're expecting to see more downside for this pair, which we did. However, we didn't quite pass and move those previous lows, and we didn't come to our target, which was 1.37, which was this support down there. We can say that 1.38, um, the market just failed to break through that area and just had a bit of a false break there. So pound USD looking quite bullish towards the end of the week, especially on Friday. You can see with that big, um, big bullish candle there closing above those areas. So I'm expecting to see another drive to the upside, especially for all that momentum there on the on the daily there drop to the 4h you can see pushing back to the upside past that area so waiting for a bit of retracement to come back into the market so then we'll be looking to target 1.4 we do have this area here of this wick so that could be on the lower time frames a nice area of resistance broken now turn support so if we can get a nice test of that area then we'll be aiming for that 1.4 potentially if we can can break above it we can go a little bit further than that maybe 1.41 but for now just looking for that 1.4 move back to the upside for gpusd and again you can see on the weekly time frame as well we did close quite bullish there uh, on the weekly there as well so the market Market could be turning bullish again for GPUSD, but don't want to call it too early. I want to see market clear 1.4 again, start holding that as support. And then yeah, we could be turning bullish for a lot longer. But for now, before that bullish momentum, waiting for a bit of retracement, then we'll be targeting 1.4 this week. And next, we're going to see what's happening with GBP CAT. Okay, so up next we've got pound CAD. So for this pair, as you can see, we had quite a big move to the upside this week. Was actually expecting to see a move to the downside uh, for for this pair back into these lows here. However, as you can see, we did fail to break through the support, and eventually the market just broke through that resistance to the upside and gave us some higher highs. So the market right now for this pair is looking quite bullish, and we're back above this key level 1.72. As you can see, strong support here in the market and as resistance but now we'll be acting as support so wait to see if we can get a retest of that area and then we'll be looking for a drive back up to 1.74 back into this resistance had a bit of a false break of that level um, and now looking for that retest of that level so i want to see if the market can pull back into 1.72 hold it as support then we'll be looking for those long opportunities if i scale down to the four hour you can see a little bit better so another test of this area uh, see if we can hold that as support and then if we do we'll be targeting this previous high here if we do find the resistance here of course and if we can break through that we'll be targeting 1.74 up there and we do have quite a lot of pips to catch if this move does play out around 226 pips so there's a lot of room to the upside great risk to reward so first waiting for a bit of retracement if we can hold 1.72 great place to look for buys and then if we do um, reject that place we'll be looking for that previous high which is kind of halfway between the resistance and the support and if you can break through that all the way back up at 1.74 Okay, up next we've got GBP JPY. And now I'm going to take a look at pound JPY. So for this pair, we had a really nice move to the downside this week, which was expected. We were looking for those shorts. We were stalling at that area of resistance there on the daily. Nice injection of bearish momentum. And as you can see, we did fall to the downside uh, quite aggressively there. So right now, pound JPY is bearish, but Friday we did see a nice push of that bullish momentum to the upside. And if I do draw in this trend line connecting these three major lows here for those wicks, so first, second, third, you can see the market has come and respected that trend line. So I think for pound JPY, we might be seeing some upside for this pair. Um, if I go in the full H, we do have this bearish trend line here in the market. 
if I connect all of these major highs there, I think we can be in for a test of that area. Uh, we are hung, hanging on to that support there. So if we can see a bit of retracement after this big push to the upside, maybe 50% or maybe even back to that trend line or that support, that would be great as well. And then we can look for those buys back up again, back into that trend line or maybe even higher. Um, if that does happen, we can probably aim for that resistance there. But for now, looking for those buys for pound JPY after that big push to the upside, a lot of injection of that bullish momentum. So looking for a bit of retracement to start the week off. And then maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, we can capitalize uh, on that retracement and take this higher and aiming for that trend line around the 154 mark, or maybe even this resistance here as well. Uh, so yeah, buys next week for pound JPY. First, we want to see that retracement, and then we can look to get involved in some longs. And up next, we're going to take a look at gold. Okay, so up next we've got gold. So for this pair, as you can see, we had a really nice push to the upside. Right now the market is um, having a breakout of that consolidation. So that momentum could take us much higher uh, if we do start to see a break of a key level, which is this level here was prior resistance, then support and now resistance again. So as you can see, resistance there, support there. Now we'll be acting as resistance. So if we can get above this area, I do see gold pushing a lot further. And we also do have this trend line here as well. If I connect these major highs here, and if I do treat that as a bit of a false break, false breakout, you can see we are testing that trend line there as well. So the market is coming into a bit of an obstacle, but I do believe that gold long term is still up. So it's either potentially gold to have this big crash to the downside now coming back up again, or it's wanting to move lower first before it does that big journey. So uh, going to be a bit more reactive. Um, than predicted with gold with this price action uh, right now we're struggling to break above this area so we might be seeing a bit of retracement to the downside for gold back to, back down to that area so we're going to 4h time frame you can see we've had a few time a few attempts trying to break through that area and so far we're having a tough time so for gold for next week if we do keep up that price action i'm expecting a move lower back into the here and this could be a nice place to look for buys back up into that resistance and then potentially that breakout or if gold um remains bullish and continues to the upside and actually break through this level again want a strong daily close above that level then if we can hold and retest this as a support then that would be a great place to buy and potentially could see gold go a lot further and we can probably target that 1860 area uh, around there so gold for now is still bullish but if it fails to break this we will probably turn bearish so it needs to be a real be a bit reactive there but if we can break through this area then buys do look good to continue into next week for gold and we'll be buying from that 1816 area on that break and retest but again want to see that daily close and then we can also target these levels all the way up there and last but not least we've got bitcoin Okay, so up next we've got Bitcoin. So for this pair, you can see we did find support. We did have a nice move to the upside, but we are starting to fall to the downside uh, again for this pair. Going onto the 4H, you can see we do have a really nice channel here in the market, connecting those highs and connecting these lows. You can see we do have quite a nice channel here. I think if we do keep trading in this channel, market will probably end up bearish uh, and seeing a move back down to the 29,000 mark, maybe even further. Um, but if you do break to the upside and start to see some bullish momentum come into the market um, and start to form some higher highs, I can see a move back up to 40,000, which is this resistance here on the daily. I can see a move back up to this level here. But on the weekly time frame, you can see we are still uh, we are still holding on to this support here. You can see we're still not managing to get close below. However, we still do have a day uh, a day and a five hours left for this week. We cancel the close. So if we do close below this area, then potentially we might just continue to the downside. If we can pull back up uh, within that time remaining, then yes, that move to the upside looks likely because um, if the weekly candle does do that, we'll probably did break uh, to the outside of that channel anyway. So um, if we can break to the outside of that channel, hold, give some higher highs, then yeah, buys look good back up to 40,000. If we don't, uh, and we actually just respect this channel and just continue making these high, these lower lows and lower highs, then yeah, back to the lows, 29,000 mark, maybe even further than that. So uh, right now, probably anticipating another move down and then if we can hold this move back up again break for the channel can look for those buys if we don't sell off again then probably can be looking for these lows down there so bitcoin right now is still bearish break of that trend line we can start to go bullish again as long as it's not false strong close above and start to see some higher highs then yes we can look to target 40,000 and potentially even higher if we can break through that okay so that is the end of the video guys i hope you all enjoyed that and found that useful like always if you have any questions agree or disagree with my analysis drop a comment down below and i'll make sure i get back to you guys make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and drop a like if you're feeling generous but thanks again for watching guys and until the next one i'll see you guys later